everyone and welcome to episode number 48 i am one quarter of your hosting team this evening mr smoke show crawford coming to you from the town of swartz creek in the county of genesee in the state of michigan in the united states of america in the north american continent in the western hemisphere on the planet earth in the milky way galaxy fully vaxxed boosted and waxed fighting sharks and punching seagulls and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. Oh, we're after me, midnight. Oh, that, uh-oh, <laughs> shit's getting wild then. <laughs> and with me as always. Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. Um, this is the episode we've all been waiting for. It is so challenging to record with these two gentlemen, just simply because they're because one's pretending to suck dick right now. And I'm sorry, I'm dying <laughs> since he's doing it. It's midnight here. It's four o'clock in the afternoon there. You probably know them and love them. I, I feel like they are definitely one of the most popular podcasts out there. They have made it on the list of the top, what was it, 50 podcasts? horror podcasts that you need to listen to if you are you must be living under a rock if you haven't heard of these two gentlemen they're they, our boyfriends they're our boyfriends but more than that <laughs> they run brackets they run um raw reviews they run a wrestling podcast they are talented they are funny and they have natural charisma and they are exactly what podcasters should be and they don't care about using licensed music which seems to not matter in australia so they're just completely mavericks and pioneers and they are daniel luffy and tim davis from fucking horror for dummies welcome to the show guys yay we're back baby <laughs> scott cut you off so daniel <laughs> Welcome Hi. back. What up? Tim, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh I'm trying to think of something cool to say, but the blood from my brain is like just reached down to my penis. I'm looking at Scott. Yeah, baby. Crawford. Yeah. Rage and Scott Crawford's all around tonight, my friend. Oh man. Everybody, even me, I even have one. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just the gorge night. clitoris. <laughs> Luffy, oh. Luffy, yes. be on your yes. best behavior tonight because yeah, we're on a fucking yeah, cool podcast. Yeah, yeah Sorry. Like we're, this is like an American one. You can't be talking about what you usually talk about. On your other... No, I'm not talking oh. about that. I'm talking okay, about what you choose to call other podcasters as of now <laughs> on your other show, particularly Scott and I, but that's okay because <laughs> Nothing, only, only nice things would I say or insinuate only, about. Oh, or honest, right? Yeah. Or honest. <laughs> Um, so as you can tell, we've known Tim and Daniel for a couple of years now. Actually, the first episode I listened to was during the original lockdown. And it's when you guys talked about going to the grocery store and Daniel, you talked about like licking people and shit. And I was like, this is a show for me. These guys are funny as fuck. And you continue to be, honestly, your chemistry is off the charts. Um, and the hardest working Patreon out there, if you are listening to this show and you are not listening to Horror for Dummies and you are not a Patreon member, you need to change that today. And, and you need to go over and so listen. much stuff. They do. They are like putting out stuff all the time. They just put out, put out, put out. And they're funny and they know what they're talking about, even though Tim likes the complete opposite movies that Scott and I do, especially me. <laughs> like, if you don't like my taste in films, you'll like horror for dummies because you'll be like, Tim gets it. So that is a podcast you should be listening to. But we do have some questions for them, like we do for all our guests. We'll start with Daniel. Daniel, nope. how did you get into watching horror movies? How did I get into watching horror movies? Um, well, I grew up with, uh, my uncle had a video shop, so hmm. I was just always in the fucking horror movie section, just like wishing I was allowed to watch them. And then just like sneakily at night, I'd, you know, borrow them and, uh, just kind of started from there. So from way before I was supposed to be watching them. So what was the first one that you quote unquote borrowed? Oh man, I can't even remember. 
Um, fuck. You're like solo. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that would have been a good start. <laughs> start him uh, off right. Yeah, honestly, no, I think it was something, something with zombies. I genuinely can't remember. I think That's I always fair. liked zombies. But, zombies are your yeah. jam. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Until we watch way too many of them and burn out, but usually <laughs> well right now you guys are watching twilight films right now is my understanding oh we're done thank fuck <laughs> oh, man. that's what you get when you go patreon um but let's let's ask mr tim davis how did you get into horror movies oh okay so unlike mr mr mushroom i can remember my first movie so <laughs> i remember i remember i was about four years old and my dad had like vhs tapes of a few different movies uh, but the two That's movies funny. that always, the two movies that always um, came to my attention were Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, and Jaws. And those two two films, those two VHSs, I watched religiously. I became so obsessed with both of these movies. Um, Freddy, Freddy was just someone I just, I don't know, he just, he was kind of the sole reason I became a horror fan. Um, but at the same time, Jaws was as well. Like Jaws, if you haven't heard our show. Jaws is my all-time favorite movie. And that's basically the reason I got into horror. I was just obsessed with anything monstrous. So Freddy, of course, is the human side of monsters. Jaws was the nature side. And from then, it just grew. And my dad had Halloween 4 in VHS. Oh, nice. Um, so I watched there. And then, like much like Luffy, we had a video shop not too far from our house. And my dad was actually pretty cool. He let me get whatever I want when we got there. So... That basically, so I kind of credit my dad for making me the horror fan that I am today because he was just cool and let me get whatever I wanted out. So from then it just grew and I just became fascinated with every type of uh, practical effect, every type of monster I could see. And I just wanted more and I still want more to this day. So, well, that's why you have a horror podcast, right? Exactly. (laughs) We'll get into that. So I guess we'll go with Daniel first. How did you get into sure. podcasting, Dan- um, Daniel? Um, I don't know. I just been I've been listening to podcasts for a long time. I was a big fan of like Kevin Smith and stuff, so the Smodcast nice. and shit like that. Um, and then we had a now defunct um network that you know got around to a good 20 30 people an episode so that was fun <laughs> <laughs> like listeners uh, or people on the episode uh just listeners nice. um but yeah we just did like general pop culture stuff we had like a video game show and like movie show and all that kind of shit but it was just you know practice basically <laughs> yeah totally but sort of like um but yeah we we're just doing it for fun and then um yeah and then when Tim ran out of co-hosts. I jumped on. Just attached myself to his bandwagon. That's awesome. Did he like ask you to be his co-host? Like ask you to the prom kind of thing? Or was it just like, hey mate, you want to get a foster and join my podcast? Oh shit, Tim. Hi. Um <laughs> Tim loves fosters and he loves when people call him mate. It's his fave. Um <laughs> right, Tim? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> He's like, I fucking hate you and all your choices in film. Um, so that's, you wonder, what I'm all, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> get some Tim Hortons. Uh, get out of here. And you wonder, and Heather, you wonder why I'm the one that gets mentioned on the show all the time. Because yeah, you're, you're Scott Crawford. That's why you're the smoke show. So did he approach you, Daniel, or did you approach him? Like, was it, or was it kind of mutual? I, th- I think we were just chatting about like mm. movies or something and um, he was just telling me because I was a fan of the show of his show um, before I jumped on. I think I guessed it on a couple as well previously, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so when he was talking about Joel not really wanting to do it full time anymore and and kind of stepping back from it a bit, um, and he was thinking about doing it by himself. Uh, I just I think I suggested, or we just came to it, sort of like maybe I should just jump on and see how we go. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it was a great fit because you guys are awesome together. You truly it's, are. As, yeah. as as joking as I tease both of you, it's just because I'm super jelly. Um, because you are really awesome and you deserve your place on that list. I was so proud when I saw you guys on that list. You truly do deserve it. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, that's pretty cool. It's an accomplishment, right? It's nice to yeah, know yeah. that people listen to you. And you're acknowledged, right? So, Tim, I feel like you've been doing podcasting a long time. You probably have a lot to share. So how did you get into it? Uh, Okay. We'll start from the start. So I think it was back in about the start of 2016. 
where I got really back heavily into horror movies. It's when I started, oh no, 2015, sorry. I started listening to horror it's podcasts. It's not great numbers. And <clears throat> thanks. I can't read also apparently. Um, <laughs> yeah, I started listening to horror podcasts. Okay, pod- champion. Horror podcasts. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> let you have your time sorry <laughs> i started listening to horror podcasts back in like 2015 and finding all these new movies that people were recommending to me and from there i just wanted to watch more so for me to do that i, I decided that i'd start writing reviews on facebook and i came up with my own facebook page called what's under the bed reviews oh that's cool and i remember yeah i was doing that for a while they're never that great they're just fucking dumb written reviews but it was a reason for me to watch movies and i had people recommend films that i should watch and have um they, they'd want my thoughts on them so i thought that was cool and i became really close friends with a podcast called the padded room podcast with um Darian brock and like and, really uh, close, james like, yeah yeah <laughs> buddy and, and and monica as well Very nice. and <laughs> Ja- yeah, buddy is buddy. Who's James? Is oh, okay, just buddy. Like God's my buddy gift guy. to women. Yeah, does he, <laughs> um, is he looking for more friends? Just wondering. I mean, he he probably won't say no. So. Oh, right. Shoot your shot, right? <laughs> um, Shoot your shot. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I became really close friends with them. I used I I still write to their show every week. Um, I'm still very close to them, and I just messaged Darian, who's the host, and said, "Hey, man, I'm thinking about starting my own podcast because." They just made it look like so much fun. And and he, he said, um, he gave me all these tips and tricks on how to start it. And he goes, listen, um, if you want, we can put you on our um, RSS feed, which means you don't have to pay anything, but you like um, put your shows out in our feed and hopefully we'll grow an audience together. So I thought, fuck, that's heaps cool. So I started doing that. We started off with my original co-host. His name was Ben. And it was cool, but it got to a point where he just couldn't commit to the time. Yeah. So he basically just just left. And then um, I was doing it a little bit by myself, but I never thought I was that great. So I got my wife to jump in and, and then, and she was kind of the same thing. She, she enjoyed it, but at the same time, it wasn't really her thing. So she mm. eventually left. She just said, Look, this isn't really my thing. So I'm just not going to do like, it. Tim, I got all on. these fucking kids. I got to take care of. <laughs> exactly. this shit, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> Stop reading me. <laughs> I can't have any more litters, Tim. <laughs> oh, did he freeze? Oh, no. but, um, me, no, um, but, uh, at that point there in my podcasting career, me and me and the mushroom there were doing another show. Me and him were doing another show called Body called Body and the Wolf Radio, which was uh what is it? Where we re- review music. And then that kind of got boring and mm. we decided just to cancel that. And then I said like I jumped on to him and I said, Hey, do you want to join Horror for Dummies? And that's it. That's the rest of his history. Uh, you auto-tuned a little bit there, but we still got it. Um, and so you and Daniel have been working together for what, two and a half years? About? Yeah, about that. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds right. Awesome. Yeah. You guys are just so much fun. And I love, there's certain signatures about your show that you always do. You always start it the same way. You have different names for Daniel and then you have your segments. And I absolutely love the spoiler alert, like spoiler alert. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause it's the beat to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. And yeah. I just think that that is. <laughs> I totally so also know about this. <laughs> Daniel and the banter back and forth where Dan- I'm constantly laughing at shit Daniel says. So this episode will just be me laughing when Daniel makes a joke because it's really funny and right. your response to it is just awesome. <laughs> so I think whatever you're doing is working and keep doing it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Totally. You're, you're welcome. You auto tuned so bad, but we know what you said was thank you very much. <laughs> Heather, you're a better host than Scott is. Oh. So I appreciate Jeez, somebody Tim finding me. sides already. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm the one that's saying all the nice things. Scott hasn't yeah, said one true. nice thing yet, right? Oh, you, well, that's because you He's always started off saying time. everything. <laughs> you, you always, you always are the one that starts off like saying all the nice things, and I just kind of ride your coattails afterwards. I know, and then Scott's like, "Me too. I think he's nice too. I think horror for dummies is good too." Well, um, well I only listen to probably like a handful of like podcasts regularly, and horror for dummies and wrestling for dummies are. Two of the five that are like complete rotation because I just love. Oh, yeah. Like automatic downloads as soon as it comes up, right? 
Um, and there's so many times where you guys are talking and I want to jump in with you. And it just kind of breaks my heart that we live in these time zones that suck so badly that we can't do this more often. That's the only thing I wish was different is that yeah. we had a better time zone connection instead of having to like one of us lose sleep so that we can actually podcast together but just better internet connections in general sometimes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn shots oh, fired that's not, that's not very nice daniel we're all friends here daniel <laughs> this is a safe space for tim oh, tim really. it's okay we see your finger <laughs> though here. tim gave daniel the finger and that's good we know that he's here in spirit um <laughs> so we'll lead in we'll let these guys definitely promo all their shows at the end and let you guys know where you can find them oh, uh, the powder- sorry what were you gonna say daniel what? I said bags not what did you say bag smart what was that? no bags not means bags can not. Do it. oh okay okay um i was like what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about it's fine I oh, I love super it. Super confused. Too Australian for you. Yeah, like, can you turn down the Aussie? Okay, like, please don't do that. Dude. No. Don't listen <laughs> like, to her. Turn that shit up. All right, I do use like on this show. By the way, before you guys came on, I said we were working with our cunts, and you guys are the only people <laughs> we can actually say that to. <laughs> yeah, we know it's um, viewer, viewer discretion advised in this episode for what I just said and what we're probably going to say as it goes through. So, Scott, oh, why don't you introduce our, our topic? I'm just gonna keep laughing at shit Daniel says. <laughs> All right. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, it sounds good. So yeah, like uh like we've been doing, this is another top five list. And we had Tim and Daniel pick the uh topic for the top five, and they chose horror comedies. And uh so yeah, this one is uh this is one of those top five lists where I would I could pretty much like have a top 20 that I could make my top five. Just like it's just so vast many that many choices. I mean Yeah, it was <laughs> it was so fucking tough. But uh That's why I got on it early. Just got it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure you did. Daniel, Daniel spent weeks preparing this list for sure. <laughs> totally not scribble down on a tiny piece of paper from work. <laughs> no, not at all. No. Uh, but most people know how we do this. We're going to go uh, round robin. Like I'll do my number fives and then uh, we're going to, I'll do this where it's me, Daniel, Heather, then Tim. That way we just kind of break oh, up. Oh, we're going to the... do Tim at the last? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so yeah, we'll just do our top fives and then go around and then we'll give our honorable mentions at the end. Like we always do. Because I have a feeling we're going to have a nice variety. Yeah, Tim's list is going to be completely different from mine, Scott's. Well, I I'll say <laughs> mine I a... is Happy Death Day, every movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the same as my list. <laughs> That's a horrible list. <laughs> It's a it's a fine list. <laughs> Scott's a peacekeeper. He's like, it's okay, everyone. <laughs> it's okay. But <laughs> I will start with my number five, and I'm going for one that is extremely low budget that I randomly found at the video store when I used to buy like DVDs all the time. And I don't I've never heard anyone talk about it. And this one is called She Kills from 2016, also known as She Kills with Her Pussy. Um <laughs> But this is an uh, this is an homage to old school grindhouse exploitation pictures of the 1970s. I can't do this movie justice without reading the synopsis. So here goes the synopsis. Be prepared to just scratch your head. All right. So Sadie's life is destroyed when a vicious gang called the Touchers targets her and targets her for their sadistic uh, fantasies after witnessing her sexy but innocent naked body frolicking in a nearby field. On her wedding night, they attack her and her husband, Edward, brutalizing both of them. But during the attack, the virgin bride discovers a dangerous secret about her body. She is cursed with a legendary fire crotch, a condition where Satan has laid claim to her vagina. After visiting her fortune teller friend, Casparella, a space exorcism was attempted on her meat flaps, but it only ends up unlocking secret hidden powers inside her. Her hatchet wound becomes lethal. Her most deadly weapon in her thirst for revenge against the touchers and her fight against lustful men everywhere. Okay, are you sure this wasn't something you watched on Pornhub? I thought it was when <laughs> I read the description the first time. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Okay, I gotta watch it. It is super low budget. And, it sounds super low budget. And it is the Kills most ridiculous. And it is the most ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's like my number one fucking pick. That's what I'm watching after we finish this right now. Just take I, notes. I have to say with this film, I went into it going, okay, this is gonna be some like hardcore, like just hard yeah, to watch film. <laughs> <laughs> he took off his pants. He got real ready for this. I, 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 <laughs> I had a raging Scott Crawford the whole time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, I, w- I went into this thinking it was just going to be something difficult to watch. And no, they like, while it's a kind of a touchy subject, they do like poke fun and just make fun of this genre. And then it gets ridiculous. And it is the most stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. But I was in tears laughing. I, I haven't laughed this hard since I was like blown out of my mind smoking weed when I was in high school, like just straight up giggle fits. And Hell this yeah. movie just did that. It was ridiculous. And there's even a scene with some Kung Fu master and another ninja that decide to uh, fight with a cat and dog and they stretch the cat and dog out and start using them <laughs> as nunchucks. Ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Is oh, it like it is... Velocipasta type levels? Of... Yes. Or oh, maybe yeah. even worse. Maybe even yeah. worse. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But it is some of the dumbest shit I've ever seen. But I had to bring this to the table because, like I said, no one's ever talked about it. And I just, I lost my mind when I watched this. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I did yeah. not see that coming, Scott, on your list. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah, this <laughs> is something shot. that has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> yeah, it will be. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put it on right now. Yeah. <laughs> my new number one movie that's horror comedy <laughs> is. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Daniel, what is your number five? Cool. My uh, number five is uh, what we do in the shadows. Fuck yes. Yeah. Just uh, oh, I didn't know we had to do like a little synopsis and shit, but it's basically like a vampire mockumentary uh, done by Taika Waititi, who I don't need to explain who he is anymore because it's fucking Taika Waititi. Yep. Um, and it hasn't just done Flight of the Concords. He's done other shit down too. Like, and- you know, a few little movies. And the writing in this is fucking brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. It's just, it's fantastic. It's gorier than you'd think, but hilariously so. Um, all the characters are great. It's just got his kind of stamp of like humor and Jermaine Clement's kind of like just all over it. Mm-hmm. Um, just a fantastic fucking vampire mockumentary movie, man. It's just makes me laugh so much. And I, I do what, like I, it's just on there because I was randomly like scrolling through one of the streaming services here and it was just on and I was like, yeah, I'll fucking watch this for like the 30th time. And I was like, oh shit, I'm doing like a list about this shit. Maybe I should throw that on there. <laughs> well, and it's and it's funny to watch over and over again, right? Like yeah, certain it's great, things like when it, they it, kill the people that come to the house. It's so funny, right? It's like, well, it's so funny. It's like putting down, I don't want to do <laughs> I'm trying to not do that shit where you just say what fucking happened in the movie. <laughs> But yeah, where he's like laying down like the newspaper and stuff because they like they built <laughs> every funny. joke earlier in the movie. Like, yeah, it, it's just such a well crafted um, comedy, and I, I think it's one of those comedy horrors where it's like it's definitely comedy first, yeah, and then horror. But it, it's still got a lot of the classic kind of horror elements and stuff to it too, where it, it tries to be freaky and tries to fuck with you a little bit. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's just uh, it's a really fucking good time. And that's a good I, choice. I have to say. Uh, this will tell you how much I love this movie. This was actually my number one. So it's going to be taken out and put in uh, one of my honorable mentions will be coming in now. I fucking love oh, this nice. movie. Greatest horror comedy ever for me. That's awesome. Uh, it's hard to beat for sure. Absolutely. Um, my number five is actually a 2021 that came out this year that Tim Davis probably hates. Um, I, know what it is. I can't wait to say it because Tim's going to be like, oh, I didn't like that movie. You know, I just think that you do it. <laughs> Tim and I don't like anything. Well, that may be That's similar. Fact. Actually, go we on. did like Army of the Dead. I think that was one that we both enjoyed this year. There wait, we go. I, I, I know the movie you're going to talk about. And yes, if it is the one I'm thinking about, you're right. I didn't like it. <laughs> okay, hold on. It's Werewolves Within. Oh, okay. Not not the movie I was thinking of, but. Oh, did you like yeah. it? <laughs> was decent. he's like it like was it. a big piece of Don't shit um, no, no. <laughs> i i very much enjoyed this film i didn't know any i didn't know it was based on a video game which i yep. thought was hilarious after we watched it so i think i can't remember if i watched it first or scotty watched it first i, I watched it and then i recommended it to you and brandon okay and i just thought the comedy and it just hits for me so if you like some political satire and just like ridiculous over the top characters like the over the top rich white lady and the over the top politician and the over the top like millennial chick, then you will enjoy this film. It is very much a movie of stereotypes that are just, you know, pumped into, you know, steroids are pumped into them and they're kind of presented and it's kind of a little bit of a murder mystery. I think it was one of the better horror comedies to come out this year. It's available on Netflix in North America. I don't know if it's available anywhere in Australia. Is it available anywhere? Was it Werewolves Within? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can find it, but... 
uh, uh, legal ways, but there's it's not on a streaming service, right? No, no, uh, you, can, you can buy it. You can buy it pretty much everywhere here, but you can't okay. stream it. You can't stream it. So I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I recommend people to buy it. I do think it's something that you got to watch first and see if it is your sense of humor and your cup of tea, um, or you rent know, it. Foster's beer. Um, <laughs> I guess you could rent it first too. That's right. You know, all of us are so cheap now. We're like, but I pay for Prime and I pay for Shutter yeah. renting. <laughs> Oh, that's ridiculous. Renting is me. Um, and I pirate otherwise. You could, you could, you could be a pirate. R. Um, but I, I really enjoy the police officer in this and his kind of like goody two shoe attitude that he has and over the top. I don't know, Scotty. I know you've seen it. What did you think? I, I thought this was a freaking hilarious film. Like that's why I, when I watched it, I was like, oh, Heather will love this. And I'm not sure on Brandon, but I'm gonna recommend it to him as well. And. Yeah, I like I love the fact that this is actually one of the better video game movies to have been made because it's based off of the virtual reality game Werewolves with uh yeah, Werewolves within. Is that yeah, that's mm-hmm. what it's called, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. Ubisoft game, I think. Yeah, yep, Ubisoft game mm-hmm. where it's just like sitting around trying to figure out who's the werewolf type thing. Yeah, and, basically, uh, which is what the movie is, right? Yeah, and yeah, had just like a good uh, good cast of like like B style actors that you see like that play like the B side style characters in TV mm-hmm. shows and shit like that. So it had a lot of Canadians recognizable faces. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, very very entertaining. I had a blast with this film. Yeah, it was. A I lot of fun. I saw it. I saw it too, and and I'll agree, it was fun. It was enjoyable. The only problem I had with it is I kind of wanted more werewolf. Yes, that is fair. There is not a lot of werewolf. There's very limited werewolf in this yeah. film. For werewolf within, it's all about yeah. it being within, not exactly. outwards. <laughs> I'll admit I did not see the twist. Oh, I'm yeah. sure no. some people will say that they did, but for me, no, nah, it caught me off guard. All right, Tim. Well, I'm gonna Tim, I, I didn't see the t- twist either. I didn't see it oh, either. Good. All okay. four of us, all three of us, Daniels and Cena, could be like, well, I saw the twist coming, guys. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> away. No. <laughs> you guys are just I probably Tim. don't. <laughs> um, so, Tim, what is your number five? All right. Okay. So before I start my number five, I must say that all the movies I picked are all comedy first and then horror. So there'll be no scream. There'll be no American wealth in London. No movies Mm. like that. So for my number five pick, I picked a movie that I don't know if it is a comedy horror, but it's a movie that fucking makes me laugh so much. And I don't think the makers intended it that way. But my number five is Silent Night, Deadly Night, part two. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a great Because pick, of obvious reasons. So, okay, here's the thing about Silent Night, Deadly Night, part two. If you haven't seen this movie, actually, let me start by saying, if you haven't seen Silent Night, Deadly Night, part one, don't watch it. You can just yeah. watch this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 basically is, uh, for the most part, a recap of the first film. And then for the last quarter, it just has new scenes added, which if you haven't seen the scenes that I'm talking about on YouTube, you've been living under a rock. Let me just Garbage say- Garbage day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this movie, I, I cannot not watch it. Around Christmas time, this is a movie, and it's not really a Christmas movie. I mean, the first one is, but the rest of this film, not really, but it's- everything it's it's realistically it's the acting in this movie the guy that plays i think it's ricky yep um yeah. the way he moves his eyebrows I was, let's play let's play a drinking game of take a shot every time he moves his eyebrows you will oh die oh my god yeah best, you would be dead swift death best eyebrow <laughs> acting in any film ever right <laughs> it's, oh man um, and like i i've listened to like interviews with this guy and he knows how bad apparently his son like has friends around and they watch this and his dad's proud of it. He's like, you know what? It, it is bad, but I'll embrace it. And I love that. I think that's cool. So Silent that is awesome. Night, it, it's a movie that I cannot laugh at. I, 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 cannot not laugh, laugh at? There not, you go. Not laugh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I piss myself every time I watch this movie. So well, you have your own check out. issues, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> go and check out Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. <laughs> Poor Tim. Wow. He's like, I haven't drank enough for this shit, Daniel. <laughs> I love. I can, I can like, see how he we, copes now. We just we just covered this in another podcast I was on. We watched all five Silent Night, Deadly Nights, which tell. Let me tell you, oh, I'm sorry, was an adventure. But there's a part where he's like, "Yeah, Doc, my family couldn't afford to send me to school." 
world. So I had to get a job. I'm like, why is everything this guy says highlighted with anger? Like it was just yeah. constantly angry throughout the entire film. And I also I thought it was it. hilarious. So I'm so glad you brought it to the table because yeah. it is really funny. Yeah, this is definitely one of those unintentional comedies I, I'm hoping because good Lord. But I yeah, this movie is it's one of those where I hate it and love it at the same time where because I say I hate it for the fact that it is lazy because it's a clip show. But yeah. then but then the parts with Ricky, it's like I can't help but like just not enjoy like how bad this is and entertaining it is at the same time. Yeah. Right. It's it's like surely the makers knew that this was a bad performance. Right. They had to. <laughs> yeah. In all, face, in all fairness, it's based off a series of a killer Santa from a fucked up orphanage, you know, like, and then the series gets real bad, like four is, is something else. Um, so, you know, comparably two isn't that bad because it at least has good comedy to it. Like right. in a the movie theater, there's a scene where he like beats, well, something happens to another patron and I'm like, you know, I fantasized about doing that. Um, <laughs> so someone in the movie, they're like, I think we've all been there. And we're like, motherfucker, I wish I could just make sure you're right. You know, get away with it. And you don't because I would die in jail unless I became someone's bitch. <laughs> That's the only way I would serve. I would have to eat a lot of box, Tim. I'd be eating a lot of box to survive in jail. So, you know. Ooh, tongue splints. Oh man, my tongue would be so exhausted. I yeah, I would have to ice it every night. It would be mm. exhausting. Oh my God. Like, oh man, this sounds really hot, Heather. Keep going. <laughs> talk more about you being in jail um but yeah i i think it's a funny movie i'm really as i said i'm glad you brought it and it's christmas time so what a perfect comedy exactly. to in, right i'm really glad that i spoke about that movie because hearing you about eating box just made right. my night <laughs> oh i'm gonna have a good night tonight you, now, now you really have a scott crawford <laughs> you're the best oh my goodness i'm so glad we're doing this all right scott What's your number four? All right. My number four is probably another one that no one will really uh, expect. And that is uh, from the awesome team that is Astron 6, who did The Editor and many other awesome films like Manborg. There is one that they got... Manborg. There's one that got picked up by Troma, though, that got them really on the map. And that movie is called Father's Day uh, from 2011. And once again, this is just one of those, I have to read the synopsis. Ahab, a man obsessed with exacting a brutal, violent revenge on the man who murdered his dad, joins John, an eager priest, and Twink, a hot-headed street hustler, on an epic quest to find and defeat this myst- mythical monster known as Chris Fuckman, a.k.a. the Father's Day Killer. And this is, if you know Astron 6, they are masters of doing the homage to the older style films. Once again, this is another homage to like the 70s style exploitation. But if you've seen the editor, you know that they know how to like add in just a ridiculous ridiculous comedy just make like just basically just th- the dialogue is brilliant and they have a ma- they have a love for those types of genres and they show their special effects even though they are true low budget canadian directors as well so Please. another bonus right there um but i just love a lot of this dialogue in this film it is funny the shit that they go through is ridiculous um and has one of the more darker endings i've seen in a film like for being a horror comedy but this I can see why Lloyd Kaufman wanted to pick this movie up and add it to the trauma library because this movie is just so over the top ridiculous and fits trauma in so many ways. Have either any of you guys seen this one? I haven't seen no. it. Sounds I have an on. Now we all got to go watch it and come back and record the rest of the show. <laughs> see you guys in a couple hours. Tim will be trash. Daniel <laughs> will be like playing video games. Yeah, There's, be um, it'll be great. There's one line I have to say, though, that I love, like uh, the main character, Ahab, he is uh, living out in the middle of the wilderness in Canada, and he's got like uh, one of those spouts knocked into a tree to make maple oh, syrup. For fuck's sake. And he's pouring it, and they're like, the one of the guys that come to visit him going, that's weird. That's not a maple tree. And the guy looked, and Ahab looks at him and goes, what the fuck have I been making then? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i feel like i have to see this movie now though scott you do it's so ridiculous <laughs> like i know you loved the editor this one's a little I did more love the editor <laughs> one is funny. a bit this one's a bit darker because it's yeah, just the content but it's still like oh my god some of the shit and this is just like all over the top ridiculous mm. and these guys just know comedy a good recommendation Nice. Um, I think we have someone else though who might have something we've seen, hopefully. So. Hey, 
Yeah, yeah Daniel, Daniel, what's your Maybe. number four? Uh, my number four is Return of the Living Dead. Fuck yeah. Nice, 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 nice. From, and why uh, is it your number four? I think is it's it 88? Just my, 88? Is it, 85 yes. apparently 85 okay on imdb i don't know <laughs> i was probably right i had no fucking idea i pulled 88 out of my ass so that's probably it's, the it's, correct it's, one. it's fucking some point in the 80s it's very some point. A very Sometimes 80s in the movie. 80s everyone's like <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i think it's just i think it's my fucking oh yeah favorite zombie movie for sure like it's just completely silly mm-hmm um like i love all the fucking 80s punks oh yeah They're just for so sure. good the characters are just so dumb like and it's just got those talking zombies and stuff and the send more paramedics bit and uh it's just great there's like tits and gore and like i don't know it's just everything you want in a fucking what zombie more movie. could you want in a zombie movie and if you love zombie movies and you love the 80s it's like the perfect sandwich yeah like i right? just i've seen it oh, like so sandwiches. many fucking times <laughs> yeah look at you but like, do you like a veggie right. mate sandwich? Right. Right. Is that what you like? <laughs> no, hey. it's all about crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> crunchy or smooth? Oh crunchy. my god, I'm crunchy. I'm crunchy. I'm crunchy too. Is that, is that how we got into like crunchy peanut butter off of the movie? <laughs> but Return of the Dead is an excellent comedy. And Scott, you've seen it. You obviously dig it. Oh fuck yeah! It's my uh, traditional July third uh, watch every year, just because it happens on July third. And- oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, and yeah, just an instant classic, and one of the horror films from the back in the day that actually scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Thanks to Tar Man. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We had Tar Man's fucked up. Yeah. That when I watched that when I was like, I'd say I was probably about seven years old, and I was watching it with my brother. And when he just looks up and goes, More brains. I'm going, <laughs> Oh fuck. <laughs> oh my god, poor little bit Scotty. So Tim's smoking and drinking right now, looking like a fucking boss. But Tim, do you <laughs> like this movie? I mean, who doesn't like this movie? <laughs> it's if we're doing like a top five zombie films, this would probably be on my list. Nice. That's all. Oh, for you dig sure. it that much. So that's cool. Well, right. finally, we found a common ground for all four of us. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> it only took two years to get Bringing there. Bringing you guys together. Here Yay. we are today. Um, my number four is a little bit more modern. I actually had a really hard time with this list. And honestly, I kind of was just, I, I went with my gut um, because I thought of something I watched recently that I did find funny. And that was the final girls from 2015. Nice. I, yes. I really enjoyed how they made fun of slashers in this film. I, like, it's just that, that over the top dude who's like, <laughs> like the tube top all the time. And I forget which actor plays him. What's he from, Scotty? Uh, he's from uh, Pitch Perfect and uh, Adam, Adam Devane. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh my god and oh, this shit he says oh it's funny um and how they get stuck in the time loop and just how they're basically like is it breaking the fourth wall is that what we call yeah it? right yeah. and it's just so fucking funny and it's a it's a great modern mm-hmm. take on making fun of slashers that i think slasher fans won't get mad about because it's kind of like ha 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 nudge nudge if you get it you get it and I think that's really clever when you include people in on the joke and you're not making fun of them, you're laughing with them. And I think this film does a great job. Obviously, you all dig it. You all kind of yeah. Hell yeah. acknowledged it. So Yeah, this is... Uh, I haven't seen it. Oh, um, you got to see this one, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, the on the list. Format of the show, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this movie uh, is a great comedy, a great slasher, and a great coming of age, like heartfelt story at the same yes. time. It's like it has yeah. incredible. I, yeah, it's I think I, t- I I teared up at a point in this movie. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Uh, a part of the end, I'm like, oh damn it. <laughs> right. But you you get attached with kids stuff. You're very much you love your children very much. And yeah, I think sometimes. anytime you <laughs> once in a while when they're not being little dicks um and yeah. bitches, but you you definitely are a good dad, Tim. And I've always heard you talk about how that always hits you in the feels. And then Daniel makes fun of you for it. But I think it's sweet. I think it's sweet. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, Tim, well, what's your number four? Yeah, Tim. My number four. Okay. Um, I'll be surprised if anyone else has this on their list. But I'm coming in with probably the yeah, oldest no, movie. Yes, I do. You probably know this. Oh, no, you have seen this movie. But who are uh-huh. I'm coming in to a year in 1948 Gross. with a movie called Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Yay! Nice. Great one. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Universal Monsters. 
And the first time I saw this, I honestly didn't think I would enjoy it because I don't know. I just didn't think their comedy back then would hit me now. But damn, was I wrong. This movie, like just the first 10 minutes, I was in hysterics. I was laughing so hard. Um, For those who don't know, the story is the Wolfman tries to warn a dim-witted porter that Dracula wants his brain for Frankenstein's monster's body. And this is, I think, maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the first films that had um, the, some of the Universal Monsters come together yep. in a collective film. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And Abbott and Costello, I, I'll be real, I haven't seen, I don't think, any other Abbott and Costello films, but this one, just, I, I was in stitches. This is so, this is one of the funniest films I've ever seen. It's great. Um, you've got the original, like, Bella Lugosi coming back as Dracula, Lon Chaney coming back as um, Lawrence Talbot, aka the Wolfman. And um, you've got Glenn Strange being the monster, who, of course, is not my favorite because um, Boris Karloff, but he does a really good job as Frankenstein's monster in this. This is just great. If you haven't seen Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, I highly suggest it. Don't go in thinking, oh, it's old. I'm not going to enjoy it because that's what I thought. And it's my number four on the list. So go and do it. Go check it out. What a classic to bring. I love this movie. I watched this as a little kid and I loved it. And I, it stuck with me still to today. It's a classic. I'm so glad you brought it up. Confession time. I have never seen it. (gasps) Off the fucking show. (laughs) I've also never seen it. Oh, that's okay, Daniel. You're you're becoming a horror fan. Mr. Smoke Show over here acts like he's seen every fucking horror movie in the entire planet. Look, Scotty, you have seen something. Uh, I've seen something that you haven't. Hmm. <laughs> no, Scott, you would like it. Check it out. It's actually uh, it's, for a Universal monster film. You would actually dig it. Oh uh, well, I, you know I do love the Universal monster stuff that I've that I've seen, and this is one that I've always wanted to see. Yeah, you'll like it because I know sometimes like both you and I are hit and miss on some of that stuff. Yeah, you'll you'll like this one. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, I'll definitely have to check it out. Uh, so, yeah, what are we at? Number three. Number three, baby. All <laughs> right. Now I'm going with one that I know people have heard of and maybe on someone's list. We'll see. But that is, I got to look up the date, but it is an Edgar Wright film. Uh-huh. And of course, it has Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. And it is Shaun of the Dead from 2004. Oh, I don't think I've ever heard of that one. No. Um, this movie just hits every fucking note for me for when it comes to ho- comedy horror uh, not only once again is it a love letter to the romero zombie films like done perfectly it has that just fantastic british humor and dialogue that edgar wright and all them are known for and it's also once again a film that has a lot of heart that actually hits kind of hits you in the feels with some of the scenes that it has like it's it's a legit just like good movie on top of being comedic and horror at the same time and i mean it's one of my favorite horror comedies that's why it's on this list i had to bring it because yeah i just i watch this constantly and i fucking love this movie to death i was talking to someone this week and i made a quote of like we'll just go to the pub and wait for this whole thing to blow over (laughs) (laughs) like that's classic right you can say that to a lot of people and they get it my other favorite line and this is when they're throwing the records and they throw the dire straits record because confession (laughs) i actually really like dire straits so i thought that scene was hilarious i'm assuming both daniel and Tim, you guys have seen this film oh yeah yeah i mean many times this was on my honorable mentions list if we're talking real real list this would be on my favorite horror comedies but I, i took it off because i knew someone was going to bring it to the table yeah yeah right. i swapped this, this is... for uh return <laughs> nice. nice yeah nice. i i think this is a movie that if, even if you're not a horror fan it's one of the movies you have to see before you die absolutely yeah. agreed and it's just a good solid comedy like it just and it stands the test of time it's still funny um and i did enjoy during the pandemic when they did that cheesy little thing about not going to the pub i'm one of those people that i'm like oh this is cute. oh yes like, that was hilarious cute. Right. Like I I, it was a little cheesy, but it was cute. And I, and I think that um, the movie, yeah, it's, I agree. I think anyone, even if you're not a horror fan, you can enjoy it because it has enough horror for fans to like it, but not too much that if you have someone that's really turned off from it, they won't watch it. So great, great pick, Scotty. And, well, thank you. And I, I think have it's also... one of those movies. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, it's, it's just one of those movies where it's like the way Edgar Wright directs and puts things together because um, he telegraphs so much stuff it's like instantly rewatchable because it it basically shows you the whole movie and he does this all the time in like the first act and tells you exactly what's going to happen if you know what you're looking for and stuff like that. 
Yeah. It's really good. Like, so you can watch it multiple times and you just keep picking up stuff. Yeah. 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 And mm. once again, this is like showing his, uh, like his editing style and his editing chops with like the whole, uh, don't stop me now by queen being played on the jukebox <laughs> and they're beating yeah. the zombie. To the oh beat. man. It's oh so my funny. God. Yeah. Like his okay. love of using music and like things that are happening in the film together is just like, that's, this is pretty much where it started. Obviously, this whole movie started from the TV series Spaced off of one episode that they had back then, which if you haven't seen Spaced and you love and you do okay. love Shaun of the Dead and all that, fucking watch that shit because it is hilarious. So and, good. Yeah, like, and he wasn't, uh, they got inspired to do this movie based off of one, like, small clip in the beginning of one of the episodes. And you can tell, like, right from that, it's like, oh, yeah, this is where they got the Shaun of the Dead idea. And it's, yeah. Love it. Awesome, um, awesome. What is your number three, Daniel? Or yeah, is number three, yeah, number three. Three? Wait, wait, to me again? Yep. Um, oh, oops, I actually did, doubled up on directors. That's okay, it doesn't matter. Um, I picked from 1996, Year of Our Lord, The Frighteners. Nice. Wow, cool. One cool. that was on my list. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so it's a Peter Jackson movie, apparently. Didn't realize that. Sure yeah, is. Fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's Michael J. Fox. It's kind of like, it's got a really strong kind of like emotional through line, Mm -hmm. which I really enjoy. And it's just, he can kind of see ghosts and spirits and stuff. So he kind of helps them move on. And, um, there's like this demonic spirit that's kind of chasing him the whole time, but it's just like the, the ghosts are really funny. Like it's just got a lot of that, like kind of slapsticky horror that Peter Jackson Mm -hmm. does. And um, yeah, I think I just remember watching it uh, like on TV back in the day and just just loving it. And then I've watched it so many times since then. Actually, I'm due for a rewatch for sure. But Such yeah, a good just, movie. A, just a good solid movie. And it, like, I, I feel it's really underrated. I agree. It, I think it's really funny. I showed it to a group of teenagers in a job I had years ago and mm. they had never seen it. And they were like, oh shit, this is funny. I'm like, I know it's funny, <laughs> right? I think a lot of people think, well, it's Michael J. Fox or just they look at you know, the cheesy kind of ghosts that are in it and they don't realize how, you know, comical it is. Yeah, and it's also got a uh, good old Jeffrey Combs playing the crazy ass FBI agent. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Jeffrey Combs is in it. Oh, Tim's love being that quiet. Man. Tim probably doesn't like the Frighteners. Tim, do you not like the Frighteners? <laughs> I, I've i seen it, but it's been based, I think, probably since 1996 since I've seen it. So I can't really <laughs> yeah, chime in. Were you born in 1996? <laughs> <laughs> not that young. How old are you? How old are you again? I'm 34. Oh, yeah, you're not that young. I don't know why I think you're yeah. so much younger. <laughs> you just uh, look so young, Tim. That's why. Thank you. It's like it's a spring this, uh, chicken. It's, yeah, it's the Australian weather. <laughs> it must be. It must be. Yeah. <laughs> it has. So it's been a while. So you don't remember it is basically what you're saying. Yeah, I, I definitely. I'm definitely due for a rewatch. Um, I do remember liking it, but I honestly couldn't tell you anything about it. That's fair. It happens. Well, we watch a lot of movies. Well, yeah. maybe this okay. should be the reverse horror for dummies. And Daniel, Daniel teaches you something. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the dummy has become the I teacher. Can't, I can't take hosting Judy. Some car, but no. <laughs> Daniel just makes jokes yeah. throughout it and tries to distract Tim. So Tim no, loses he, track of his thoughts. He's right. He really is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love I Tim love with you. the real talk. I love it. Um, I guess Fresh I'll come in with my uh, my number three before these two get the divorced, and then <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. So know, you can always listen to Friday the Nightmares, so it's fine. Guys, uh, <laughs> guys, if, if you get divorced, I just want two Christmases. <laughs> <laughs> and two no birthdays. And two, yes, birthdays and two birthdays. Right? <laughs> uh, my number three is a movie that was my first time watched this year. And like, I couldn't stop talking about it to Scott for a really long oh, time. God. And that was Club Dread 2004. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I forgot all about this one. Oh, my oh, God. The guy with the dreads. <laughs> like him alone and like just the whole slasher concept that they're at this club and my best part my favorite part is where i can't remember the the character but he's playing a song about like daiquiris and they're like oh yeah yeah, play margaritaville he's like no no you mean play yummy direct factory or something like that like it's just so funny and i had skipped over it and skipped over it because i'm like, not gonna like this it's gonna be too dumb no it was perfect dumb for me and it totally like clicked all my my boxes or checked off all my boxes what about you guys you guys like it i love I've this film man. I, oh man okay oh so daniel you gotta from, watch it 
This comes from the guys from Broken Lizard who did Super Troopers. Yeah, and yeah. I, think- I, I saw it was like Jay and I was like, shit, this is Broken Lizard yeah. movie I haven't fucking seen? Yep. I, I, think, I think I'm the only person in the world that really liked Super Troopers 2 because everyone seemed to shit on that film. I love these guys. I honestly forgot about Club Dread. Otherwise, it probably would have been on my list too. This is, yeah, this is great from start to finish. Yeah, that's freaking hilarious. I haven't watched it in a while, but I have to say, Heather, when you said, I couldn't I know stop what you thought talk- I was going to say. Yeah, I did you caught me off guard and I completely forgot that. Yeah. You were talking about this movie a lot after you oh, watched man. it. That's going to be so fucking funny. <laughs> Shit. It's so great. I want to go watch it right now. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> so it good. is one of those movies that you can just throw on at any time and just have a great time. It really is. Right. And it's just the, the guy with the dreads. Like, and he's always so fucking <laughs> shit. Oh my God. Anyway, Tim, what is your number three? All right. So my number three, I'm coming in with a, a sequel um most people would probably have the first one in their top one but i'm coming in with the sequel of dead snow dead snow 2 red versus dead and if you know what dead snow 1 is dead snow is just a continuation dead snow 2 sorry it's it's just a continuation basically it's nazi zombies so the story is still on the run from a group of nazi zombies a man seeks the aid of a group of american zombie enthusiasts and discovers new techniques for fighting the zombies this one is just um, <laughs> full blown gore fest with some of the best jokes ever. It's um, oh, I can't remember what country it comes from, but it's somewhere in Europe. I think. Oh yeah, I can't remember. Poland is it Norwegian? Something. Oh, yeah, I, I honestly. Norwegian people come up with cool shit. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. It's Norwegian. Norwegian. It's, yeah. Yeah. There we go. But um, yes, this this features um zombie Hitler in it, and uh, <laughs> some of the jokes in it just. It's if, if you're easily offended, then then don't watch this film. But yes. I I loved it from start to finish. It's fucking hilarious. There is a lot like there's there's babies being killed. So if you once again easily offended, don't watch this. But uh, I love all that type of humor. So this one really worked for me. The Tim gore loves is dead babies. <laughs> Tim loves some dead babies. <laughs> the gore is just crazy. The story is just fun. The pacing's great. Like you will never get bored watching this movie and um it's ridiculous i will say that so don't take it seriously i mean who takes comedy horror seriously but this yeah. one is Some just people. Over well, the zombie top. nazis like in all fairness check the like know what you're walking into right like yeah exactly right? exactly this is a movie like when i started re-watching watching mm-hmm. horror films like when i started listening to podcasts this one was brought to my attention and i watched it and i could not stop watching it it's um it's like another one that was mentioned that will probably be mentioned again later but um, I, I could not put it down. I kept watching it because I think it was on Netflix at one point, which has been taken off now. But yeah, it was always on. I just, I love this film. It's fucking hilarious. It's great. Um, over the top gore and it's everything that I like. So Dead Snow 2, Red versus Dead is my number three. Awesome nice. choice. Awesome choice, Tim. Love it. Love it. Love it. That is excellent. Um, I haven't seen it either. I want to. Oh, oh, yeah, I thought you would love Nazis. Daniel? Put it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, his list is so long now. He's going to no longer it, be the dummy. It's a huge list. Oh, it's man, a, it's a big it's, list. It's almost as huge as that Scott Crawford he's carrying right now. Oh, so huge. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so it'll be my number two. And I think Daniel kind of hinted at a movie that was on my list. So I'm going to take it off because I know I know him and I have a very similar taste when it comes okay. to the ridiculous comedies. And so I'm going to take that off the list and add from 2020, my number two film of the year. I know Tim watched it and wasn't nearly as impressed as I was, but that is Ghost Killers versus Bloody Mary. Oh my God. Tim wasn't the only one that wasn't as impressed as... <laughs> You were. <laughs> it's oh. not bad. I know it's your jam, and it doesn't. It definitely has its place. So it's that over-the-top, extremely violent, just stupid slapstick humor that I freaking love. Reminded me of Evil Dead, Dead Alive, all that shit. And it's just, it hit every funny bone for me, especially when. Well, I'll just kind of give a brief synopsis, but this is basically those uh, YouTube paranormal investigators go into a haunted house. Haunted house. <laughs> and, and, haunted. <laughs> and they hear about the legend of Bloody Mary in this high school and shit just goes haywire. And when I watched this, I did not expect it to be like so extremely violent and blood soaked and funny mm-hmm. as it was. And there is a scene with a 
dancing baby fetus that I instantly just <laughs> lost my fucking shit and was giggling nonstop for like 10 minutes straight. I had to pause the movie because I was just in tears dying because of how I was wiggling its ass and peeing in the guy's <laughs> face. And Oh my God. It is like that gross humor, but it is like it hit every funny bone for me. And like, I know if Daniel seen this, he would fucking love it because he has that same taste and humor like yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but- if you're like Tim and I who are sitting here like, mm-hmm, it was fine. Um, <laughs> you know what though? I, I When I watched Brain Dead this year, I realized why you like this movie so much. Because mm-hmm. you just like a lot of this over the top, um, gross out horror stuff and that is fine it has its place and this movie is well made um i don't love it as much as you do but i totally respect it being on your list and i'm kind of glad that tim and i have a common ground i'll be honest (laughs) that's more what i'm happy about is that we're both looking at you completely unimpressed (laughs) Uh, because i it almost broke my heart when i heard tim go well i finally watched it because scott crawford recommended it yeah it was okay you know what's tim's heart tim you watch movies that we like You'll watch me be like, how I like this? I gave it a one. I didn't, I didn't dig it. But you'll do, you'll watch something else I recommend. You're a good friend. Like, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you guys are the, po- like, you and the horror cast, actually. You and Mark, you guys and Mark Nato are the two guys that I listen to reviews and I take notes about what films you guys watch. And, and this one, um, Ghost Hunters vs. Bloody Mary, was one that I was really excited for. And it took me forever to find it. Oh, and it's hard to find. I did. Yeah. Um, I... Look, I enjoyed scenes of it. That fetus dancing baby was fucking hilarious. Uh, I think it went just too much for me. I can say right oh. now, without a shadow of a doubt, that Daniel, it's you will Dan. fucking love this movie. Yes. It? It's on, yeah, it's mm-hmm. on Dan. For fuck's sakes, of course it is. After I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, you'll have to get to me when you watch this movie because this one should be like the first film you watch out of everything we've talked about tonight. Yeah, I know it's your style. Uh, <laughs> I have to wait till next year, but. <laughs> I'll watch it. Yeah, Tim Two has him too busy to watching other one. movies. He's like, only 2021's moving forward. Yeah, I'm not allowed. If I watch anything else, I'll get yelled at and scream. <laughs> if you watch anything else, I'm making you watch Twilight again. No, yes. no don't. I couldn't even get through the last time. I had to shut it off. I'm like, fuck off. I couldn't Wish. even do it. They're bad. They're real bad. Terrible. Oh, that's great, though. <laughs> but, uh, Daniel, what's your number two? Well, you fucking nailed it, dude. Um, brain dead. Yep, dead alive. Number that two. was that was my number two. I took it off because I knew exactly. Uh, ten out of ten. You movies. do have a lot of similar tastes. Also <laughs> watched it for the first time last year. Tim was just like, "Pretty sure you'll like this." <laughs> <laughs> um, and we did an episode on it, and I fucking loved it. It's such a fantastic movie. Like, it, it's just so gory. It's so messy. It's so like just blood covered and fucking weird and i love shit that you've never seen before and it's like all practical effects and it's it's actually fucking like like it's not just gore like it, it's i remember it being like genuinely layered like yeah. yes there's a yes. reason for everything it's a whole yes. like i think it was like a, a, it's been a while in my brain shit but like it was like a whole relationship kind of like yeah totally metaphor no, you're right. thing you're right but and and so like it wasn't just gore for the sake of gore and it wasn't just like um weird imagery for the sake of it being weird it was all there for a reason it all kind of made sense in 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 the frame of the movie uh but yeah i just i think i really love peter jackson movies that don't have hobbits in them um, <laughs> oh man fucking hobbits like i like yeah, these like, hobbits like i said oh. i accidentally doubled up on the peter jackson movies in the top five list and yeah, like, I can't believe I hadn't seen it until last year, but, like, it's a fucking straight-up 10 out of 10 movie. If you haven't yeah. seen it, you need to fucking watch it. Like, even just just to say you've seen it. Because it's, like, like it or no, it's like nothing you've ever seen. Yes. Agreed. Mm. Agreed. Are you a fan, yeah. Tim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I watched okay. it for the first time, too, when Daniel did. And, yeah, I, I knew straight away that this is a movie that Luffy would love, so... <laughs> And like I knew straight away it was of a smaller intellect. So I knew that it was <laughs> something that Scott, I when I watched it, I was I was so impressed by the practical effects. I wasn't a huge fan of the movie, but I respect the, the shit out of that film. And I think Daniel, you summed it up perfectly by saying that. Like, even if you're not a big, you know, over the top horror, like I, I don't want to say grotesque horror, I'm not sure what to use there. The practical effects aren't incredible. Like, like they're incredible, right? So 
Yeah, this is back the thumb. This gore, but it's not like visceral, sort of painful. No. how I can feel it. Gore. It's very yes. over the top, silly, comical gore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like people slipping around in their own blood and shit and it's all silly. that kind of shit. And, and I mean, there's yeah. like a ten minute scene of the dude like kicking the baby and throwing it around with like <laughs> which is pretty carriage. funny. Which oh is pretty God. funny. Yes. Yeah. I remember Absolutely. I was I was I was eating dinner when watching this and that scene <laughs> oh. where they're eating pudding. Oh god. I had to put it down. I had to put my dinner down. I couldn't finish it because I was literally feeling ill. Like it was gross. <laughs> hey, if you ever need to lose some so weight, good. maybe just put on brain dead and just you know, <laughs> not and it will help you eat less, right? Um that's awesome. That's awesome. My I number kick two. ass for the Lord. Yes. <laughs> That and it's Kiwi, and those can't sound funny. <laughs> <laughs> See, we got the C word on this show. It's the only time we can actually say it without us looking like big offensive assholes in North America. Oh, sorry. Right? No, it's fine. You guys are on, so it's okay. Okay. It's okay Australia because boss. Aussies use it and they use it in a different way than we use it in North America. So it's we're just affectionate. being inclusive, yeah. right? And we're just being yep. inclusive and accepting. Um, my second move, my second is okay. When this movie came out in the movie theater, I was 17 years old. I went the first night with my, my boyfriend at the time. And then I went the second time, the second night with my other boyfriend at the time. Just kidding. (laughs) I wish I I was that much of a player, um, with my friends. And then I went on the Sunday and it was scary movie 2000. (laughs) I saw that movie three times on the weekend that it came out and whether people love it or hate it i thought that shit was fucking hilarious like when he ejaculates she gets stuck in the fucking ceiling that shit is still funny to this day or the homeless man being like i don't want a sandwich bitch (laughs) (laughs) oh my god i you know and of course like it was making fun of scream and you know, I know what you did last summer and I forget what other movies, it made. I think I can't remember which other ones it made fun of in the first one, but like loved it. I thought it was so fucking funny and I can still flip it on, flip, like flip through, see it and watch it and laugh today. What about you guys? Are you fans? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Tim's like, I fucking hate it. No, no, no. Okay. I did, <laughs> back when this came out, I, rem- I remember watching it. Like I didn't say it in the cinemas, but I remember watching it and like being somewhat offended because I was like this little fucking teenage horror fan going, <laughs> hey, they're making fun of my fucking horror movies. The yeah, funny horror movies, horror movies are crazy. <laughs> So, but now, like, I can appreciate it now, and I fucking love it. I love the first, the first two. Beyond yes. that, it just gets yeah, a bit dumb it gets a little me. like there's parts that are funny, but they're not like the first two, which are just like joke after joke after joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, like even like Regina's overly gay boyfriend, which is pretty offensive now, is so <laughs> really all right. I'll tell him that I love him. Like, it's just funny shit that gets said throughout it. It's so funny, no. right? Oh, yeah, I I fucking love the. Like, yeah, the first two movies are fucking hilarious. They're so offensive, but my God, I can't totally. help but just laugh. And right. I knew this was going to be on your list. I just didn't know where exactly. Well, you knew when I talked about the cinema, like yep. going three days in a row to watch this fucking film. They were all like, what's this bitch doing here again? I'm like, I didn't like the movie. Like, honestly, like, I'm sure they were like, what is wrong with this chick? But, um, so we're finally at our number. Oh, no, well, no, we're not. Tim. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim. I see. Okay, let's move on. Late, Tim. That's my justification. What is your number two? All right. All right. My number two is a film that when I first saw it, I fucking hated it. I really didn't like it. But it stuck with me. And no, it stuck with me and stuck with me (laughs) for so long that I needed to revisit it and I ended up loving it. And I won't tell you the name of the movie. I'll just say, bullshit artist. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) We are talking about Daniel and I are like, oh, I don't know. Yes. The the Greasy Strangler. Oh, my God. Oh, I haven't seen it. Holy shit. You had this. This is a movie you need to put on your list. Yeah, this This, is. Yeah, dude. um, I I can't even tell you really what it's about because still to this day, I don't really know. But it's a movie that I guarantee. (laughs) Like it or not, it will it will stick in your head. Just the score alone. The soundtrack is a, is a soundtrack I'll listen to just when I'm doing house activities. Um, then you've got the gross, like the the practical effects side of this. And oh, we gross. said Dead Alive was gross. This probably ups the ante by ten. This movie is fucking really? gross from start to finish. Yeah, yeah, if you um if you're okay with seeing nudity, then, then this is the movie you need to watch. Uh, you're gonna see dicks in this movie. If you want to see oh, big, there's nothing I love dicks. more, Tim. 
That's my favorite thing in the entire planet. It's big, like but, floppy old man dicks and stuff. Oh, wow. Well, that's not my favorite. Dicks. That's not my favorite thing. I mean, it's really big, though. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie is actually one of the most quotable movies ever. Yes. Like, there's so many lines, like, Hooty tooty disco cutie. Yeah. I was just, I was literally <laughs> chanting that in my head as you're talking about this. <laughs> I, I urge you all, if you have a, if you haven't seen this, go and watch it. I need to know what I you will. think because I will. It's a weird movie, but it's gonna stick with you. It's probably gonna make you feel sick. It's definitely gonna make you feel uncomfortable. And you'll you'll be reciting lines from the movie for the next two weeks. So it'll be Scott, like I'm podcasting sorry. with Scott. Those are all the feelings oh. I get. <laughs> Rough. Rough. I mean, Shit. I can I can relate with the greasy strangler, so it's all right. <laughs> I feel like but, uh, I feel like there's no middle for this movie. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna fucking hate it. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Definitely. Cool, like, cool. yeah, I've got friends who I've shown, and one of my friends who's a massive Choma friend, Choma fan, hates this movie, and I don't understand why. But to each their own. Um, greasy strangler, go and get go and get greasy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love greasy. So- I gotta give my thoughts real quick because when Tim said, "Yeah, I didn't like this movie the first time I watched it." Okay, I've only watched it once. I, Two, I, I watched it when it came out. What was it? 2017, 2018, something like that. Twenty sixteen or twenty sixteen. Holy shit! Okay, so when I watched yeah, well. it, that was the last time I watched it. Was that year? Wow, to this okay. day, I still don't know if I like it. It's one really? of those films where I'm going, "Holy shit!" It's 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 like an ear uh, earworm where it's this yeah. thing will get stuck in your fucking head, and you're going, "Do I like it? I don't know." This film, it's it's so weird. It is the most bizarre fucking thing I've ever seen. Has some of the most funniest moments in it, but at the same time, it's just like a head scratcher to me. It's like, I'm like, I think I love it, but do I? I almost want to buy it because I think I love it, but do I? I don't know. I'm so confused. (laughs) And it's uh, one of the best ways I can describe like the humor in this is if you've ever been a fan or have seen the Adult Swim TV show, the Tim and Eric show, then you you will get the sense of humor because that's these that that sense it's, of humor yeah, lines up completely with this. absurdist nice. yeah nice. and it's yeah. it hurts my head even thinking back on all the scenes but like the potato <gasps> scene that porto movie. potato oh, man. porto potato porto potato just over and over and over again for like five minutes straight it's like oh my god what the hell's going on right now <laughs> i think he's saying potato <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I uh, go and rewatch it because I had the same feelings uh, my first time I was like I didn't like it but it just stuck with me and I and the second time I watched it I'm like I love this movie it was in <laughs> I think it was number three of my favorite films of that year nice <laughs> so yeah I think I nice. watched it initially because it was um, Elijah Wood produces it yes produced yes. it right. and yeah. just anything he does is always going to be interesting because yes, yeah, he, he doesn't need money he just does weird shit. And yep. I love weird shit. So it was just like, oh, okay, he made it. All right, I'll check it out. Or he produced yeah. it anyway. <laughs> and and it's, uh, yeah, it's one that I think, yeah, if I watch it a second time, just because I feel like I am Tim in that area where it will probably be something I'd rewatch again over and over and over again. Because it's just like, it just gets stuck with you. And then you just kind of love it because of how fucking absurdist it is. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like, great choice, man. Holy shit. I, did, I completely <laughs> forgot about that movie. <laughs> uh, so holy shit, we are on to our number ones. Woo! All right. Yeah. So my number one is going to be very basic, bitch. Um, but I have a feeling it may be on someone's list. So well, I'm hoping I'm not stealing anybody's thunder here. But we'll see. I have to go with a sequel that is just absolutely amazing. Um, it is also that ridiculous slapsticky humor. Stars a wonderful man oh, from Michigan. Oh, I know. Who right? is. I get it. Yeah. Uh, the greatest <laughs> chin in the world. And that is Bruce Campbell in Evil Dead 2, 1986, I believe. Um, I could be wrong on the day. I'm not looking it up right now. But I just love this fucking movie so much. Bruce Campbell is Ash. This is where Evil Dead 1 is like so fucking horrific and one of my favorite horror films. Evil Dead 2 just takes that, ramps it up. And then this movie also is basically like where Bruce Campbell finds his character of ash and just rolls with it the rest of the time and it's that over the top gore the sam raimi fucking hectic camera shots and fucking flying around the room and just such ridiculous slapsticky humor um i lose my shit every time when he like sits down in the chair the chair collapses and the 
deer head just turns and just starts laughing then everything else around him starts laughing and he starts laughing and he's kind of going up and down with a freaking lamp and <laughs> then they pause and then they just start all bursting out and laughing again <laughs> oh i love this movie so fucking much it's been a childhood favorite of mine and yeah all-time favorite comedy there's not much i can say besides that yeah this is horror comedy at its finest for me you fucking awesome bitch. i knew it i knew i was gonna take you Daniel. i couldn't help it fucking bitch all right that's okay well i stole i stole your number two but i cheated anyway and i put evil dead 2 and army of darkness ah nice because oh. i i always hmm. watch them together see makes sense yeah, they're a good combo so, like they do belong so together I didn't, I didn't know if i was cheating but yeah yes, there's no rules totally, here we don't give a fuck totally evil dead 2 and um yeah totally army of darkness as well it's just fuck everything that scott said it's yeah just, sam raisey's just, sam raimi's amazing directing fucking bruce campbell being the most bruce campbell um and then just all the weird effects and the hand shit and the mini ashes and the evil ash like in army of darkness and shit like and like when he's like saying the magic words and shit like that <laughs> like they're just yeah both together um like i Right, Evil Dead to overwhelm your darkness if I had to pick one or the other, but together they're definitely just my favorite movies of all time. Like hands down, awesome. like they they never get knocked off the top spot for me. See, Luffy and I, we we've connected here. Like I, I like them. Movie. I don't like them as much as you guys do, but I do think they're awesome. Yeah, because I, awesome. I had you watch it for the first time yeah. when you came to visit, didn't you? Wasn't I did. No, that's yeah. correct. I did. Yeah. yeah. Like Back I don't in know the day. Of, yeah. A lot of horror stuff, but I've got like um a couple of like the the Necronomicon like weird skin editions yes of those so ones. that's cool. the, the little one where you push the button and it screams and shit yes <laughs> hell yeah dude <laughs> all right yeah cool yeah that's you, adorbs. you and i are on the horror comedy level for sure luffy <laughs> i take it are yeah, you a fan yeah. too tim you haven't said anything mm -hmm. are you a fan i'm not a fan of the old dead no i'm totally what? joking Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he said it so serious I and i was like oh man uh <laughs> your face like him was that's just like him saying, ah, oh, man, I can't make it tonight. Just fucking call me off guard like you motherfucker. <laughs> and a fucking classic stitch I get up. too nervous around Scott. That was really funny. <laughs> um, no, I, I think, Heather, I'm coming in the same with you. Like, I, 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 I dig them. I appreciate them. They're not my favorite, though. But I can appreciate the Evil yeah. Dead franchise. So. See, Tim and I are slowly rebuilding our relationship here. And so <laughs> we're, getting that's, there. we're getting there. We're really working on it. You know, we're really trying. <laughs> Does um, that mean we're gonna have to swap boyfriends here? Because I mean, Luffy and I are. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't break up you and Tim. <laughs> I can't. I'm never gonna be the other person in that relationship. <laughs> um, my number one is Student Bodies from 1981. Nice. Wow. Um, I can watch Student Bodies over and over again and fucking find it hilarious. Like when I first saw this movie in the opening scene where he's going up the stairs and he's like, "Fuck, there's so many stairs or whatever." He says. Yes. <laughs> what is this or like constantly you know oh he's just helping her look for her, the bathroom when they walk away from things and they're going to go bang and like just the over-the-top silliness of this film this is you know where satires for me like there would be no scary movie without student bodies and I think student bodies deserves this place in horror comedy hall of fame whether you're a huge fan or not you got to respect what they did in 1981 with making fun of the slasher john because <laughs> it was funny it and there's a lot of high school fucking slashers like there was a lot of that shit and they just jumped on that bandwagon and it was mint are you guys fans of student bodies i've never actually seen it oh you would oh, like it, it. it's pretty funny it. In the I think I it's a parody it, movie. It's a parody movie. So, okay. as I said, there would not be a scary movie, in my opinion, without Student Bodies. Okay. So student cool. Bodies okay. is the original kind of parody of making fun of slashers, and I think you guys will both find it really funny. Scotty, you're a fan, I know. Yes, you you told me to watch this, and I'm like, when it first started, I'm going, oh dear God, this is definitely a Heather comedy. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, this is because it's just so we have different tastes in comedies for sure yeah right but at yeah. the same time i'm going oh my god this is fucking hilarious but oh my god this is ridiculous like it's, it's just making fun of shit like it's a parody right so you gotta walk into it knowing it's a parody death by eggplant that is one thing i will say death by <laughs> oh my god i need to say this now i hate eggplants <laughs> see that's the problem see you'll <laughs> like the movie emoji. 
<laughs> right? So <laughs> now we're at Mr. Tim Davis. What is your number one, Tim? Uh, okay, so mine's already been listed. Fucking Luffy ruined it with his number five pick. My, my number five was, uh, sorry, my number one was um, What We Do in the Shadows. Ah, um, nice. Awesome, that was, my, that was right. my number one as well, Tim. So, yeah, oh, that's nice. fair. So yeah, I'm, I'm going everybody's to everybody's day eight shit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll go and pick one of my honorable mentions here. Um, I will just say what we do in the shadows is definitely my number one favorite horror comedy of all time. It's actually, yep. it probably be in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I um, thought straight it would out. be. So, Sorry, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker. All right. So I'll go with another one. I'll pick one right now. And, and one film right now is, is just beaming up to me and saying, pick me, pick me. So I'm just, give me a second here. Are you going to start taking <laughs> meds again? <clears throat> I just got. I got to. I got to say this title correctly. <clears throat> Death Castle. Yes! I knew it. As soon as you start clearing your throat, I knew it. <laughs> nice, dude. I was like, "Is he okay?" Like, I was more concerned if we needed to like get his wife or something. <laughs> so I'm glad that's not the case. No, uh, you you can't say Death Gasm without screaming. Death it. Oh. Yeah, nice. I'm digging it. So if you don't know what Death Gasm is, the story is two teenage boys unwittingly summon an ancient evil entity known as the Blind One by deliver by bit sorry by del- Delving into black magic while trying to escape their mundane lives. This mm. is a, uh, a, a metalhead slash horror heads dream movie. Mm-hmm. You have it's basically Evil Dead with metal guitars. Yes, pretty much. Um, I was thinking of it for my like for my list and shit, and I was like, I couldn't fucking remember the name. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you brought it because I completely forgot about Deathgasm and I am kicking myself in the ass. <laughs> I have not seen it yet, so I oh, hear, oh, I better watch, watch it. it huh? It's, a, it's a, another Kiwi one too. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, from very nice. It's from our not friends in New Zealand. And um, <laughs> not friends. Sheep fuckers. Not friends. <laughs> They're fucking dirty sheep fuckers. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. We like New Zealand. Um, you're, like, but yeah. you're like, please subscribe to our Patreon, New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. But Deathgasm, like, there, there is so much to this movie that you can enjoy. I mean, do you want to see, like, evil, I don't know what you call them, like, deadite zombies being smacked around by a big black dildo? Yes, yes. you do. Anal Who beads? Yeah. Nothing I love right? better than that. Anal um, bead nunchucks. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> I mean, my favorite scene in this movie is is when they're trying to come up with their band name. Yes. But you'll know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with... <laughs> um yeah man this is a definitely a movie to go check out i i think out of all my list um the greasy strangler and deathgasm are both movies that, that heather you need to go check out i want to yeah, know well. what you, you think so yeah deathgasm deathgasm I just feel like this is a metal thing that I need to get on to, obviously, yeah. right? Well, this yeah. was, uh, if we ever did our heavy metal horror uh, theme, this was going to be one of my picks. Oh, well, you I guess we'll to. have to do it. We'll have for Tim. That's yeah, why we got to do it now. So what we'll do is we'll go back around and anyone who wants to list any honorable mentions that haven't been said or wanted to like recognize another film. So we'll start with you, Scotty. Is there anything you wanted to recognize? All right. So yeah, I got five that I'm going to bring up. Oh, that is Tucker and Dale versus Evil from 2010. Great film. Fucking love this movie. Wow, uh, <laughs> nice. You know, once again, the whole uh, hill people horror type film, but like uh, just done like complete, like complete swap of characters which is just freaking hilarious. Just like this whole, everyone's just accidentally killing themselves around these poor guys. And it's once again, uh, was it Dale? I think it is, is just so charming and just such a, mm-hmm. you just want to just squeeze him. Yeah. You just want to hug him and squeeze him. Cause he's just such a nice guy. And like the movie is just, Oh, <laughs> Oh baby. You just make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> do I make you hard, baby. <laughs> oh, you do. But you know, I'll just, this feel like you know, us flirting like this. We'll just roll into my next one real quick, which is, not my hunky boys. Psycho <laughs> Gorman, 2021. <Yes>! Funny <laughs> movie. Love that yeah. fucking movie to death. This is where I know Luffy and I definitely disagree, unfortunately. But <laughs> um, also Kevin in the Woods, 2011. No, nice. yeah. brilliant yeah. take on mm. like just the horror tropes. Uh, Reanimator, 1985. Yeah, no, okay. Because that one's just more of a dark comedy, but like cat dead details later i mean (laughs) (laughs) and then once again i'm bringing one that not many people have probably heard of this is a michigan-based film michigan made independent 
uh, met these guys at a horror convention. Uh, the director, I think, is uh, Brian Papendria, or uh, and I think uh, Nathan Rumler is also one of the people that works on this film. And it is called Fang Boner 2015. Oh, my <laughs> God. And it's basically about these two people that wake up that uh, have uh, been bitten and they think they're vampires, but that they realize like, but they have to like the only way to uh, get blood is to suck dick and bite the uh, bite the person's dick. <laughs> I need and to see this movie. It is oh once again God. super low budget and ridiculous, but it is like like it's really micro budget. Like yo, it's super. Like two of my favorite, two of my favorite things: blood and dicks. Right. Love it. <laughs> and so Love they come together, perfect. Oh, <laughs> uh, they are just. And they just do such a great job with this movie and you just find out like other ridiculous shit like they find out later on like, oh, we didn't actually have to suck dick to drink blood. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's just stupid shit like that. You just, See, that's why you just have to do it for the love. Exactly. It. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we just got to love what you do and do what you love. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, they actually did get pretty good distribution on this where it was actually being sold at Walmarts, which kind of shocked hey, me. That's pretty good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, like I think it was uh, picked up by Wild Eye Releasing. And I'm they surprised were that like, Walmart was like, oh, yeah, this is something we want to add to it. Right? <laughs> I was shocked. Um, right? But but yeah, definitely, this is just something micro budget. So if you're into that micro budget style filmmaking and you like the idea of the synopsis, go check this film out. Give some love to these local uh, artists from my my hometown. It's freaking great. Nice. Uh, so Luffy, what are your honorable mentions? Um, there's so many that are gone now. Uh, Ghostbusters. That's that a was good on my list. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, and this is the end. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. This is the end. Is funny. Yes. And what else have we got? Beetlejuice. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. And I couldn't decide between Happy Death Day or Freaky, but I think oh. I like Happy Death Day <laughs> I think, too. I don't I know why just you hate it so Tim. much. I'm going to say happy death. I don't know why you hate it, Tim. It's not that bad. Oh, I could not stand this movie. Perfect <laughs> it's, it's and then bad. they made a sequel. And Tim was like, it was even worse. <laughs> the sequel is not as good as the original. I, I never even bothered with the sequel because the first one was fine. Like, I wasn't a big fan either. See, you two are getting Yay. back together. Right? Yeah. Tim, love my, you. My honey. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Oh, We're yeah. Turning it up for what on this podcast? <laughs> and I liked Put Freaky too when it came out. Freaky was a nice little thing that slid into the end of 2020 last year. Mm. Um, to make us all feel a little less shitty. So I'm really glad Freaky came out like last Freaky. year because I Freaky enjoyed was it quite a bit. It was fun. Um, Even Tim liked Freaky a little bit. Yep, oh, well, I, I know Tim likes getting freaky, huh? Yeah. Uh, high five, high five. High five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for me, a lot of them have already been said too, but mine are a little bit more modern. I really thought the Banana Splits movie from 2019 yes. nice. was really funny. I just Tim, thought yeah. these like, robotic fucking characters coming to life and killing people was Love hilarious it. hilarious that I, song is I have a very great. yes like I, yeah like i just have a simpleton sense of humor um <laughs> i enjoyed cooties from 2014 with elijah wood i thought that was that, a really funny film too that was on my list as well yeah um and then obviously scary movie too we already kind of talked about the two first scary movies and like the part with the mashed potatoes is still fucking funny <laughs> right like and tim curry being in it and how they make fun of rocky horror picture show too and just like so much shit um and then Take my strong it, hand <laughs> me too and he touches the <laughs> no oh thanks i can do it myself oh fuck that's the best <laughs> And then finally, just this year, a little bit of a shout out. If you haven't watched this 2021 film, though it came out in 2019, um, it was released this year's Benny Loves You. I think yes. um, Benny Loves You is a lot of fun. Not everyone's got, Tim doesn't like Benny Loves You. Cattle me. You. Do you I like Benny? No. <laughs> I was, it was okay. It was, yeah, it was all right. It was okay I, I for you. So yeah. that's 2021. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Luffy, okay. you got to check it out. Yeah. Luffy. Yeah. Right. yeah I, you'll probably find it funny luffy i get like yeah. either it's a hit or miss for you right like it's comedy is such a subjective thing yeah you for know? sure like you know as much as we tease tim you know everyone has different tastes and comedy is definitely one area where it's very subjective yeah sure. um but those were those were my honorable mentions um so tim great list what about you nice uh, okay, so some of my honorable mentions have been listed, but I've got a few here. I'll start off with the Monster Squad. Nice. Um, nice. 
Going back to yeah. Universal Monsters, of course. Um, Wolfman's got nards. How can you not love that line? Yes. <laughs> uh, another one from the 80s is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes. Oh, I've never seen that one. I got to get oh, on this. Oh, wow. It's such yeah. a good movie. Even yeah. I've seen that one. <laughs> Daniel's like, get with the times, Heather. Yeah, you dude. call yourself a horror <laughs> podcaster? <laughs> Um, another one for Christmas time actually is is probably one of my favorite Christmas movies, Santa's Sleigh. With <laughs> oh, Bill God, Gordon. I love Santa's Sleigh. It's so funny. It's the best. It's hilarious. It's, that first Goldberg. scene with, with yeah, and then yeah. everyone in the first scene like um, oh, Fran Drescher getting Fran like, Drescher killed. And, yes, yes. Chris Every, everyone's yeah. Oh, it's you great. know everyone there. Um, yeah. So Santa's Sleigh is definitely one. Uh, another one, Little Monsters. Have you guys seen that? Little oh. Monsters is really funny. I like Little Monsters quite a bit. Yeah, it's a good this one. is a, this is another one that uh, had heart and almost like almost had me in tears. So I like oh yeah, one. there's some feels. There's some feels. Yeah, this is one where yeah. I was not a big fan of. Yeah, oh, shut up, really? Scott. Yeah. No, the Scott has no soul. It's okay. Little <laughs> Monsters is awesome. It's fine. Too. And the last one I'll mention, and and I want to say this to last because um, it was actually on the news the other day. One of the stars passed away, mm. and he was not old at all. And that movie is Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Oh. Um, yeah, it was it was one of the scouts. Um, Who's his name? Joey Morgan, who played Augie, the fatter guy. Oh. Yeah, I I do remember seeing that in the news. That's yeah. Bad. Yeah, he died um the end of Heart November. Disease? Uh undisclosed. So okay. who knows? But no, this movie is fucking uh, it's funny as hell. It does what's his name? He plays champ in Anchorman. Um oh, David Koshner. Talking- yes. yes. Yes, yeah. He's in it, he's fucking great in it. Uh this movie makes me laugh. Like, yeah, once again, a movie with penises in it and uh a tribute <laughs> stretching tri- penises. Yeah. <laughs> a tribute to Britney Britney Spears. So yeah, what's not to love about this movie? So that's it for me dude that great list yeah well thank you so much for you gentlemen being here for everyone who's listening you have a variety of horror comedies to listen to as we said comedy is very subjective and our lists are always personal so please share your list as well this is our final special international episode that we've done for the month of december and we saved the best for last though mad and lance are going to hear that except for you guys you guys are great too (laughs) um but it's just we've always had a very very big love affair with tim and daniel um and it's just so rare that we're able to work together just because of the time difference so we're so happy we were able to do that tonight uh, or tonight, this afternoon, whatever time zone you're listening to this in. Um, you guys want to promo your stuff so people can check you out? Yeah, Luffy's going to do it. Me? Awesome, Luffy. <laughs> oh, so tell us where to find to what, you. What Tim says, and he'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. You do it. All you right. Know, you know how to do it better. Yeah, I'll fucking, yeah, I know how to do everything better than you. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> horror for dummies is a show where it's probably the dumbest horror show on the net you can find mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. because i i teach the stupidest person in the world about horror movies. <laughs> you're just redoing your intro <laughs> uh yeah so if you want to hear me and a luffy here discuss various movies old and new jump mm-hmm. onto our uh, horror for dummies you can find us anywhere we're basically on every single app where you can spotify find itunes fucking wherever you said you didn't want to do it. Now shut up. I'm helping. <laughs> Turn out. I'm just trying to help Tim. And uh, if you want, of me. <laughs> if you want more info, go to our Facebook page. We are the Horror for Dummies Super Friends on uh, on Facebook. You can find our group there. Join us and just uh, interact with us. We're, we're fun. I, I, I like to think that oh, we are. fuck yeah, you guys Very are. Very fun. <laughs> you always have question of the week, and Tim always reads out question of the weeks, and even mm-hmm. no matter how ridiculous your response is, He'll read it on air. Um, mm-hmm. And also you're part of the pop. How do you do that pop noise for the powder room? Who does that? The, who does it? That's you? Yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. The powder mm-hmm. room podcast pa- network. And also padded, the Patreon. Padded room. Padded, padded, padded room. room. Sorry, not powdered room. Padded room. <laughs> Sorry, James. Sorry, Darian. Probably don't listen anyway. But if you do, I didn't mean to I'm talk. Awesome. In all fairness, it's like <laughs> 1 30 in the morning for me. Um, and why don't you, you know, promote your Patreon? Like, give oh, Patreon. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we we have a Patreon account. Um, yep, where we do we have a bunch of tiers, bunch of different tiers. But over there, we have a plethora of different shows. We've got the bracket shows where we yep. all different topics. Um, we just did one the other day, which is coming out on Christmas Day, which is the best Christmas movie. Special and Christmas gift. Better be Gremlins. Oh, 
Scott, oh, can shit. you please let Tim finish? <laughs> oh, I- Look at him staring at me. I, feel I know. And for everyone that can't see, Scott oh. has got his face ridiculously uncomfortable to the it's camera so now and has stopped the Patreon. Discussion. You know what? I, I, I'm going to come in right now and tell you that Gremlins is on the list, but it, it comes as, as, as close to the end as Jaws did on your top 10, uh, top oh. 10 70 shows. Tim's like, how does that feel, Scott? Yeah. Oh. How does that feel? <laughs> You motherfucker! Can, can he man. finish? Can he finish talking about his Patreon now, Scott? I'm like, I'm like Kanye West. I'll let him finish in a second. Honestly, I feel like this is a Taylor Swift Kanye West event. All right. Yeah. So we do bracket shows. I've got my own segment there called Tim's Top Ten, where I do a top ten on basically anything. Uh, we do a, another show called the Happy Magical Explosion. Super, super happy show. fun time super or some shit. Yeah, yeah, it's something like I fucking that. Don't That's remember. basically our just recap show on horror news and uh what we've been watching lately it's basically all the cut we stuff uh, we all the stuff we cut from the old show and put it in yeah. this one. Oh, nice <laughs> <Yeah>. okay <laughs> and then coming next year we have a few new shows i'm doing a uh arnold schwarzenegger tribute show yeah, because nice. i realized that i oh, i know if you too i realized yeah. that i haven't seen enough arnold schwarzenegger movies which is not right and i need to come fix on this so <laughs> yeah awesome and uh and then another show called Behind the Boogeyman, where I talk about in depth our favorite horror icons. So nice. a lot of shit on there. So if you want to become a Patreon member, join us and uh, I'll give you a blowy. Who he will, and he's really good at it. So you'll really, really enjoy it. And he'll um, make also, sure you have a raging Scott Crawford. <laughs> make sure you check out these gentlemen's wrestling podcast. If yes. you are a wrestling oh, fan yeah. and you watch AEW and WWE, which which be real, like AEW all you other people, like most people watch. aren't watching TNA or you're not watching Ring of Honor. And like, if you are, you're no probably going to get annoyed by Tim and Daniel because they're real talk about, about WWE and AEW and they do a really good job. So please check that out um, and just support these guys. They are so good. You will not regret listening to their podcast. It is some of the most fun you can have. And, and um, they are maniacs because they put true. out so much fucking content. <laughs> true. Well, Tim's a maniac. He edits all of it. And he yeah. always like has the best editing ever. I don't, yeah. Daniel shows up and it's just like, you know, the looks and the comedy and Tim's the <laughs> guy behind the scenes. And now he's showing off his tattoos this entire time. How many times has he stretched his arm back and I'm getting caught staring at his arms? Tim, stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is so... It is so fucking hot here in Australia right now. I'm I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting a really hot Scott Crawford right oh, now. Oh man, like, it's just <laughs> it's really veiny right now. Oh for goodness sake! So, okay, before we go, why don't you explain Scott how the Scott Crawford dick thing came to be? Actually, how about you guys explain it? Because I can't. Oh, like shit. it was. I know it was about something about. Oh, me, it was about you going to heredity and yeah. then or heredity or no heredity, heredity. heredity. right? Yeah. yeah, see, I can't speak either. And then you jerking off in the car about yourself, wasn't it? Was that <laughs> what the story was? I, I forget, yeah, like what they what you guys said, but yeah, it something was like, about that. You're Scott Crawford, you can do this and get it up, like something Gosh. like that. Look, they're dying. All three of them are dying. That's what it was, wasn't it? I don't it? remember that, but that definitely sounds like something. <laughs> yeah, I honestly don't remember how Scott Crawford came up, but yeah. When we refer to to a, a Scott Crawford, it just means big, juicy, veiny. Just dick. a fucking monster <laughs> erection. Just and a I love that that's a thing. Like Scott, as the smoke show, he's referred to as a big, veiny penis. Like honestly. And they're like, oh, there's Heather. <laughs> <laughs> She's there besides the smoke show. There's the emotional glue that holds us all together. Oh, no, I'm not. Because I don't even get mentioned in your fucking show half the time until you're like, oh, yeah, we like you too, Heather. Those two people <laughs> you know you're going to say something to our chat that we have. Because like, we do have a chat and I do frequently go in there and bully tim and daniel because they don't mention me on the show and don't include me on the wrestling podcast so now that you now that you've spoken about yourself eating so much box maybe we'll throw to you so much (laughs) you know what box eater box eater I mean, Heather, Boxing Day is coming up, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. I'm ready, Scotty. It's a big day for me. It's a real big day for me. Uh- <laughs> the D-Jaw workout and shit. Uh- Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Stay limbo. 
That's right. You know, you got to do what's best for you. So again, thank you gentlemen for being here. Um, I, is there anything else you wanted to add before we leave? Yeah, no, it's just, one. Just, no, I meant no, Tim no, and Daniel. Scott. Okay, oh, sorry, I, meant- <laughs> I just want to tell everyone listening right now that you should go check out this cool podcast called the Friday Nightmares podcast. They're our best friends and we love them. And Heather Aww. eats a lot of box and that's oh, cool too. I, on Boxing Day, <laughs> but <laughs> specifically on Boxing Day, it's a big day. Um, <laughs> thank you tim no we're always so glad when you guys can be here and it's so special when we're able to do this together so now daniel did you have anything you wanted to say before we pass it over to scott nothing i can't no i don't know (laughs) yay (laughs) all right Scotty, you can see us out now all right well i just want to say yeah once again thank you guys so much for joining us like i know it's a bitch working like with our schedules just because of our time zone oh it's in the afternoon for them they're fine we're We're the ones that are struggling right now well i mean we've also done it where they were recording at midnight before that is true that That was when i was doing night shift so it's sweet right (laughs) (laughs) but i just gotta say thank you guys so much because i fucking love working with you guys every time i have such a blast love the shit out of both of you guys wish Uh we could do this more than that like more than we do but you know when we get this chance it's fucking great and i cherish every moment of it and i have actually like told people that don't even listen to podcasts what a scott crawford is because that's how much it's been inspired now <laughs> you guys have inspired he wants me. everyone to know about his big dick that he's known as big baby <laughs> he penis that's what he his wants dick out of people he's like yo know it's scott crawford you know what this is so scott's man <laughs> from majority of the states now <laughs> That's why they left me in Michigan. <laughs> That's why, right? For sure. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I will close out the show and just say, yep, once again, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, please go check out the Horror for Dummies, Wrestling for Dummies, Kaboom. If I'm not sure if that's coming back for sure, but, like, uh, <laughs> go to their Patreon. Like, subscribe they've got a to, lot going on. Oh, Don't forget about subscribe to Friday Nightmares. Oh, he's yelling at the cats. Okay, subscribe to... <laughs> <laughs> to legion podcasts and listen to friday nightmares on the kill the cast feed and all the other awesome legion podcast um shows that we have there as well as please join the legion podcast um patreon we are of many so now scotty now that you're done yelling at your pussies um yeah thank you for that because good lord the bunch of fur just went flying and there was lots yeah of i saw you like mute and you were just pissed oh, so guys you want uh oh. Uh, Do you want me to close this out so you can go deal with your, your out of control pussies over there? Yeah, I'll mute. You can take care of that real quick if you could. Thank All you. All right. Well, Scott's got to go take care of his cats because he has 18 of them. So until next time. Hey, fuck, you pulled I'm... out a shotgun. <laughs> there I go. Am I right? America, fuck yeah. Right. <laughs> and he's in Michigan too. I don't know why he doesn't have his shotgun. Um, so until next, my butt. Time... <laughs> until next time, what do you want to say to the good people, Scotty? Until next time, everyone, have a wonderful and happy and safe Merry Christmas, because this will be out on Christmas Eve night. Uh, What else would you rather listen to on Christmas Eve night, honestly? Exactly. Uh, So until next time, kitties, unpleasant dreams. See ya.